Ideas. What are they? By definition, an idea is a thought or suggestion as to a possible course of action. An idea is also the aim or purpose. Everyone has ideas. The nature of someone's ideas depends entirely upon the source and intention behind the idea. A thought can be inherited from education, influencers, socialization, or a thought can sometimes be entirely original. Every idea implemented is one step closer to reaching the extreme of a particular thought, suggestion, aim, or purpose. Sometimes, the extreme of an idea can subvert the intentions. For example, Medicare for All or Universal Healthcare to many people sounds like a fantastic idea. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone could have free access to healthcare? Wouldn't it be fantastic if you didn't have to worry about being billed for being sick? It would be great if no poor person would have to suffer financial hardship due to medical expenses. One might say, these are noble beliefs, therefore the intentions are pure. Let's take these ideas to their extreme, or as I like to call it, their logical conclusions. Let's continue on with the concept of universal healthcare as an example. Let's for a moment forget the debate about whether or not it is even close to possible to afford it. Never mind whether or not the government can run these types of programs efficiently. All we are going to do is simply parse the concept of universal healthcare and break it down to its tiny little pieces. The linchpin of universal healthcare is the government's ability to exert authority. This isn't my personal opinion. If you support universal healthcare, this is something you must admit. Lacking power to exert force precludes the government from providing healthcare. Otherwise, the government can't tax in order to pay for the service of universal healthcare. If the government lacks authority over the industry, then the government cannot allocate funds for specific reasons. A government that has no ability to choose what happens to the funds it distributes will experience a feeling of doubt and lack of confidence. How will this government know where and what this money is being spent on? If the government gives hospitals and clinics money, what is going to stop the money from being wasted on frivolous expenses? The answer is nothing. How do we solve this issue? The simple answer is that the government needs to oversee what this money is being spent on. Logically, the next step is to create an organization to observe what the money is being used for. Now that the government can see where the tax money is going, it finds that the funds aren't being spent correctly. And who decides what is deserving of taxpayer money in the field of healthcare? The staunch pro-life Mormon conservative elected to represent the residents of Utah, or the vegan leftist who believes in oriental mystic medicine elected represent, to represent the residents of California. In reality, it doesn't matter who it is, who gets to decide where the money is spent. Due to the fact that in reality, the government will assert the power to dictate where the money goes. Maybe on the surface, this doesn't bother you. Let's continue down the journey of taking this idea to its logical conclusion. What is up for grabs if the government has the ability to choose where the money goes? The simple answer is the specific industries that the government is funneling money to. After all, it only makes sense that the government controls the industry that is funding that is funded in order to ensure proficiency. Why oversee where the money goes when you can directly control it? Now to some nationalization of the healthcare industry isn't a scary idea. But think about it. At least think about it further. What did the government, via nationalizing healthcare, just do? It usurped the power to decide when, why, and if it gives out health care. The government is going to have to deny certain services to assure that money is saved. The government is now in control of administering birth control. It is the government's job to draw blood, conduct drug tests, supply the procedure of abortion, and completely store your medical records. What was once a discrete matter is now a government property. Let's now go down the slippery slope. In this hypothetical, the government controls healthcare. What if the government finds that overweight people are too much of a tax burden? What if people who drink soda are considered too much of a tax burden? What if anyone with a genetic or immune disorder are considered too much of a burden? After all, these are the people who will utilize medical services the most. Considering there's no cure for most genetic or immune disorders, what happens to those people who are a higher risk? 
They will either be denied treatment or punished via citations, misdemeanor, and felony charges due to partaking in these activities that increase the risks of hospital visits at best. If you thought it was if you thought it was bad that people with pre-existing conditions were getting denied health insurance, imagine if there was no private hospital willing to care for you. Would you rather be denied health insurance but still receive health care with a bill or be, or be denied without any help whatsoever free of charge? If you are feeling overwrought by today's bureaucratic healthcare system, imagine the anxiety you'll feel under a nationalized healthcare system. This particular video wasn't meant to be about universal healthcare, but universal healthcare is one of the best examples of what happens when you take an idea and then give it unbridled growth. Ideas do not live in isolation. Ideas are constant. An idea in one direction, whether or not the growth is exponential, is still closer in a particular direction. Each day you live, you are closer to the end of your natural life cycle. Each step you take, you are closer to a mile. Each step you place your foot on going up the stairs from the first floor to the second floor brings you closer to the second floor. And remember, examining ideas based on their logical conclusions is not a straw man. Just make it just to make it crystal clear that you are examining a specific idea based on its logical conclusion. And when you attempt to play out all the scenarios in your head of where specific ideas might end up, be certain that you accurately take an idea step by step. I'll leave you with this. Each idea that is suggested or implemented should be looked at with attentive eyes.